Ever seen those wildfire evacuation orders on the news and thought, nah, I'd grab a few more things? Today's deep dive, well, it might make you think twice. We're going deep into someone's wildfire story, and it's packed with those hold on what moments that kind of change how you see fire season. Oh, yeah. These firsthand accounts are something else. We're working with a story that's really detailed, conversational, almost like we're right there with the person telling it. I like that. To keep things private, we'll call her Julie from Jamul. Okay. Okay. So picture this. You're living near where a wildfire is burning. You've had to evacuate once already. Total chaos. Packing up your six-year-old daughter. And now it's happening again. Oh, man. You get that sinking feeling just thinking about it. Right. Except this time, Julie's ex is totally against leaving. He's saying, too much stuff. We have animals. Like, the whole bit. It's amazing how often we see that, even when it's clearly dangerous. I know. That need to cling to normalcy. It's so human, you know. But it's also why disaster preparedness is so tricky. How do you get past that it won't happen to me and actually make good decisions under pressure? Especially when it's not just you, but a kid, pets, and someone who's basically in denial. Like that feeling of what do I even take times a hundred. It's overwhelming. Have you seen this kind of resistance a lot in your work? All the time. People underestimate risk. They're emotionally attached to their stuff. There's a ton of research on this, how people actually act in disasters versus what they think they'll do. Hmm. It's rarely pretty. So how do we prepare our families get past that freeze moment when it matters? That's the million dollar question. Mm -hmm. And honestly, Julie's story is a masterclass in what not to do. But it also shows us just how powerful those instincts can be, even when they lead us astray. Okay, so maybe we should dive into what happened next because it gets intense. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so this is where Julie's story gets wild. Get this, fire trucks, they're going up to her house. Not once, not twice, but three times. Wow. Yeah, firefighters are practically begging them to get out, even spraying that, you know, fire retardant stuff all over their rental house. No kidding. Julie describes it so clearly, like bright pink goop everywhere. See, that's a detail that's actually super important. It's not always about putting out flames directly. They're making what's called a fire break, like a temporary wall, but made of chemicals that react with the heat. They wouldn't be that insistent but, unless it was seriously dangerous. You'd think that would be enough to convince anyone, right? But they're still stuck in this, we'll see what happens mode. Oh, no. Julie even says she could see the glow of the fire at night getting closer. Then, middle of the night, bam, bam, bam. Someone's at the door. <laughs> Talk about a wake-up call. Right. It's crazy how our survival instinct kicks in, but often when it's almost too late, that scramble to get out, I bet a lot of our listeners know that feeling. It's like your brain finally gets the memo, right? Exactly. So they pile into the car, dogs, everything, and they end up in this dirt field surrounded by canyon walls. Oh, wow. It's like out of the frying pan into another kind of fire, you know? Yeah. It makes you wonder how often does the terrain itself, like those canyons, become a factor in these situations? All the time, actually. And in Julie's case, it's kind of both lucky and terrifying. Oh, so? Well... Those walls might have been the only thing between them and the fire's path. But being trapped like that, it creates a whole other set of problems. Isolation, for one. So they're safe, but stuck in this dirt field for two weeks. No power, no cell service. Can you imagine? It's like, we take so much for granted, right? Just having a working phone or knowing what's going on in the world. Absolutely. That's where the mental and emotional part of wildfires, yeah. it really hits hard. Right. Julie's family, they had each other, which is huge. Yeah. But that lack of information, not knowing, right? it's incredibly stressful. For some people, it's even traumatic. Makes you think preparing for a wildfire, it's not just the go bag, it's your mind too. Exactly. You start to wonder what help is even out there for people who've been through this. It's a whole other conversation. The resources, the long-term impacts. But even in Julie's story, amidst all that hardship, there's this bright spot. She talks about a little cafe down the road, running on a generator. It became a lifeline for them and others who were stranded. Oh yeah, I remember that part. Just offering free ice to help people save food from their freezers. It seems small, but in that moment. Huge. Exactly. It's what we see time and again in disasters. That community resilience. It's like this unexpected kindness. Did that surprise you, reading her story? You know, it always gets me, but it shouldn't right? Because it's human nature. Yeah. We pull together when things fall apart. It's not just the ice. It's the reminder that you're not alone, even when everything feels chaotic. It's that shared experience, the knowing looks. Sometimes 
That's everything. Speaking of looking out for each other, Julie's story takes another turn with her uncle Jeff, the fire chief. Turns out he was not about to let his niece go through this alone. Oh, right. He sends a whole fire brigade down that dirt road to check on them. There's a tendency to think of first responders as, well, just responders. Yeah. But it goes so much deeper than that. Yeah. Especially in smaller communities. These are our neighbors, our friends, our family. It's personal. Exactly. Julie's story, it really highlights that human side of emergency response. And her gratitude, it jumps off the page. She ends with this line, no matter how much they're appreciated. And you just feel it. It's a good reminder that behind every uniform, there's a person who cares. Totally. Yeah. Well, there you have it. From refusing to evacuate that middle of the night escape, the isolation, kindness, then Uncle Jeff and the fire brigade. Quite a right. It reminds you wildfire preparedness. It's not just the practical stuff, the go bags and routes. It's the mental, the emotional. Having those tough conversations with family beforehand, so important. And knowing that community, those small acts of help, they make a world of difference. It's about understanding that human element. Yeah. The wildfire itself is just part of the story. Right. Well, hopefully this deep dive into Julie's story gave everyone some things to think about, maybe even sparked some conversation. Absolutely. Until next time, everyone, stay safe out there and stay curious.